Hey guys, so I wanted to kind of go over the stuff for the second pathophysiology exam. And if anyone else is watching this, it's because I uploaded it to YouTube. Um, but I want to see if this will actually help me study better. Uh, so I'm going to go over everything we have in our PowerPoints and then I'm going to keep rewatching it um, so that I learn what's in our PowerPoint. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start with chapter 10, which is hematologic alterations. Um, all right, so first we're going to be talking about the diagnostic tests. So to start with, we have what is called our CBC, or our complete blood count. This includes your total red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. And then you have your differential count, and that's going to be used for just your white blood cells. Um, then you have morphology, and the way that you observe morphology is with blood smears. And what they show you is the size, shape, uniformity, and maturity of cells. And with morphology, you can actually um, distinguish different types of anemia, uh, which makes sense, anemia and blood smears. Um, and then you have your hematocrit. Now this is the percent by volume of cellular elements in blood. Um, this is dealing more with your red blood cells um, and since we have to know our numbers, hematocrit for males is 45 to 52%, and then for females, it's 37 to 48%. Now, I want to say something to kind of make that a little bit easier. Don't quote me on it. I'm just doing it for myself. Um, I'm going to memorize it as females is 35 to 45%, and males is 45 to 55 because they're kind of within those ranges, and it's easier for me to remember fives than... 5247. You get my point. All right, so that's hematocrit. Um, and then we have our hemoglobin. Now, our hemoglobin, that's all oxygen stuff, but um, specifically the amount of hemoglobin per unit volume of blood. And the actual part of hemoglobin that talks about the oxygen is actually your mean corpuscular volume or your MCV. This indicates the oxygen carrying capacity of blood. Okay, and then we have our reticulocyte count. This is the assessment of bone marrow function. So I don't think it's in our notes, but I would I would think you'd see that with like leukemias because usually you might need a bone marrow biopsy um, in order to diagnose leukemia and then possibly a bone marrow transplant. So I would be thinking that your reticulocytes are going to be checked. Um, Okay, and then we just have chemical analysis, and that's just determining serum levels of different stuff. So you serum levels of iron, vitamin B12, folic acid, cholesterol, urea, glucose, serum levels, chemical analysis. Um, your bleeding time is going to measure your platelet function, because that's dealing with coagulation and stuff. Um, and then you have prothrombin time, or PT, we talked about this in ARM, um, and your partial thro thromboplastin time, or your PTT. This is a measure, uh, it's a measure function of various factors in, coagula in the coagulation process. And then the standardized version, again, more farm, is INR or international normalized ratio. Yes, I know, we all ate farm. Um, okay, moving on. All right, so anemia. Anemia causes a reduction in oxygen transport. So all the anemias were having issues with a lot of the oxygen getting perfused through your body, um, depending on what kind of anemia you have. So the basic problem of the anemias is a hemoglobin deficit. You don't have enough hemoglobin. Um, because of that, you don't have the oxygen getting where it's supposed to be. And because of that oxygen deficit, you're going to have less energy production in the cells. They're not, the, set, the cell metabolism and reproduction is not going to be working the way it's supposed to. It's going to be really diminished. Um, you will have compensation mechanisms. Uh, fast heart rate or tachycardia and peripheral vasoconstriction, which your body's going to try and compensate. Um, you're going to have some general signs um, of anemia, which is going to be being tired. You're going to be fatigued, um, paler or pale face, dyspnea or difficulty breathing, and tachycardia or a fast heart rate. Um, you also have a decreased regeneration of epithelial cells, which makes sense. So metabolism, reproductions, not working because of the lack of oxygen, then you can't replace the epithelial cells. Um, so due to the lack of generation of the epithelial cells, your digestive tract is going to become inflamed and ulcerated, 
leading to stomatitis, or I believe, don't quote me, inflammation of the stomach. Um, you're going to have inflamed and cracked lip, lips, uh, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, and your hair and skin may show degenerative changes. And this, again, is because of the decreased regeneration of epithelial cells. All right, then you have severe anemia. Now, if you have severe anemia, there's two things that it can cause. I'm sure there's more, but based on our PowerPoints, it can lead to angina, which, remember, from our cardio section is, if, it, if I'm correct, I believe it's pain, so chest pain usually, um, or congestive heart failure or CHF. All right. Now we are moving to iron deficiency anemia. So in iron deficiency anemia, you have um, an insufficient amount of iron, iron deficiency. Um, and what an insufficient iron does is it impairs hemoglobin synthesis. Um, in iron deficiency anemia, your red blood cells are going to be what's known as microcytic, so they're going to be small and hypochromic, which means they're going to have lost their color because iron is what gives them the color. Um, so iron deficiency anemia will, um, it, it, the res how the cells are, that's the result of the low hemoglobin concentration in the cells. So hemoglobin gives them their color. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Um, so iron deficiency anemia is very common. Um, and it can range from mild to severe. It does occur in all age groups, but it's going to be seen primarily in women of childbearing age. It's actually estimated that one in five women are affected. That's 20% of all women. Um, well, at least within childbearing age. And then the proportion will increase for pregnant women. Um, also, iron deficiency anemia is a frequent sign of an underlying problem. Um, so that will make sense in the next slide where we talk about the causes. So you can have a dietary issue. Um, this is probably going to be seen more in vegetarian diets um, where they're not getting enough meat, so they're, or they're not getting any meat, so they're not getting enough iron. Um, also, chronic blood loss. This can be caused by a bleeding ulcer, cancer, hemorrhoids, and that's where it's a big deal where Iron deficiency anemia is often a sign of an underlying problem. So cancer, bleeding ulcer, yeah, pretty big deal. Um, then you have impaired duodenal absorption of iron. So it's just not getting absorbed into your intestines like it's supposed to. Um, so your malabsorption syndromes, I think we saw that for the last test a couple of times. Um, and then severe liver disease. Pretty much everything gets metabolized in the liver. So if the liver is messed up, the iron can't be metabolized, and then you have an iron deficiency. Um, all right, so signs and symptoms of iron deficiency. You are going to be pale. Your skin's going to be pale. Your mucous membranes are going to be pale, which makes sense because we were talking earlier about the fact that they are hyperchromic RBCs. The color is not there anymore, so kind of makes sense if you're pale. Um, you're going to be tired. You're going to be lethargic. And you're not going to be able to, to tolerate cold. Um, you're going to be irritable. You're going to have degenerative changes. They're also talking about the hair and the skin. Um, you're going to have stomatitis and glossitis. Uh, that's inflammation of the stomach and inflammation of the tongue, I want to say. Um, menstrual irregularities. So also an increased, um, an excessive menstrual flow can cause, that's chronic blood loss, so iron deficiency anemia. Um, delayed healing, tachycardia, heart palpitations, difficulty breathing, and fainting. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say these pretty fast because I'm really not focusing on diagnostic tests and treatments for most of this stuff because, well, there's way too much stuff to focus on. Um, so you're going to have lab tests for iron stores. That's going to be your serum ferritin, your transferrin saturation, and your total iron binding capacity. You're going to want to find and uh, eliminate or rule out sources of blood loss. And then in order to treat it, you're going to need some iron replacement therapy. And symptoms should decrease, usually within the first month of therapy. All right. I'm going to take a break. <laughs>